Hey everybody, welcome back to the Antonio Neal channel. I appreciate y'all. Thanks for liking, subscribing the channel. You know, I'm happy about the direction that I'm moving my channel in, more talking about, you know, my business and kind of like a change of life. Um, had a big birthday recently and, you know, things just kind of changed and so going into another direction. On my way to another farmer's market, um, this is about the seventh week of being a farmer's market entrepreneur. Uh, I'm learning a lot, a whole lot. And I guess today's video is kind of dedicated towards what I'm learning, the good, bad, and ugly, and all that, and just this process. I had no idea what I was about to get myself into when it came to uh, launching a business at a farmer's market. I loved it. Well, at first I didn't love it. At first I was kind of afraid of it, if I'm honest, because I didn't really know what to expect. I used to see people out there with their tents and all that other stuff, and I thought that was kind of, I don't know, I didn't take it seriously when I saw other people, and I didn't really know that people were doing real business uh, at the farmer's market. Now, there are people that are doing it part-time and just hanging out, you know, give them something to do, but a lot of people are doing a lot of great things and taking care of not only their families and other people's families. So, I'm in this drive-time traffic, and I'm like, how do I, you know, what do I share today about my experience? And the way I'm crafting the channel is just to talk about real life, my life. I'm not trying to make nothing up. I'm not trying to entertain anybody. Just really this process. But this process has been beautiful. And this process has also been hard. This process has taught me a lot about community. I've said it before, the people who, the other vendors in the, in the uh, farmer's market community has been a major blessing. Um, to us and it's something that I never would have expected in the beginning um, This is one thing I would say if you're starting a business at the farmers market You're gonna see things online and people talking about buying everything like, you know setting up your your uh, Place of business just like somebody who's been doing it for five years. I would say don't listen to them um, If you don't have the money don't do it. Don't go into debt like I'm deep debt for you know, a $9,000 tent and all these banners and all this extra stuff. It's like, if it was me, the first thing I would do, I would just invest in my product. That's the first thing I would invest in my product to make sure that what I am offering to the public is the best that it can be um, in the beginning and, and to continue to improve it. Um, if you got people on your team that don't care, that don't care about the product, then you're gonna be in trouble. And at the end of the day, if you are the sole proprietor or the CEO, the buck is gonna stop with you because whoever people deem as the leader of something, they're gonna come to you when something's wrong. And and if you allow people to just kind of like treat what you're launching as mediocre and the public gets it and you put a price tag on it and then they don't like it, they're gonna come back to you. They're gonna say something to you and that's then the ball is going to start rolling you know the other way for you um what happens if your product isn't great they'll go to the manager of the um <clears throat> the farmer's market and they'll make a complaint and a lot of times you know it, it depends on the validity of the plant complaint and the person who's making a complaint that owner will come the manager will come to you and tell you what the people are saying and um to let you know because sometimes in these farmers markets people start boycotting you um, for one reason reason or another if you change your price if you do this or that you know people don't like what you're doing they will literally boycott you and they will get on these little groups and talk about your business and folks will stop coming uh, well the regulars will stop coming and if you're doing something and people don't like it and you're changing your product just just say one day your product tastes like this and then the next week it tastes differently and then the next week it tastes differently again and people feel like okay that person doesn't care that person isn't putting their heart into it that person is just just getting up out of the bed doing throwing something together and just want us to buy it all those things that i'm learning and what i'm hearing from others and also the managers that impact your business if you don't care about your product people are not going to give you their money and you can fool them maybe once but after four, five, six weeks, a couple of months in it, people are gonna say, okay, that person right there, that business isn't worth a penny because they don't care. They're changing their, they're changing their, their, their uh, the taste of everything. They're changing this and that. They're not gonna like it. So I'm telling y'all right now, what I'm learning, 
you have to pay attention to the quality of what you're doing and making sure that you're consistent. Because again, if you don't, you're not going to have a business. People get online and they will kill your business. Just yesterday, I was talking to a guy that has a very successful uh, hot sauce uh, company called Big Reds. And I was talking to Paul Ford and he was telling me about this guy that had a successful, was getting ready to have a very successful popcorn uh, business, was starting to grow. And the next thing you know, people people didn't see this person as being consistent. They would show up where he was supposed to be and he wouldn't be there. And what happened, people started saying things about him, started getting online, writing posts about him, writing bad reviews. And now this person is not in business. That's not what you wanna do. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if doing the farmer's market, if you're not serious about it, if it's just casual for you, don't quit your day job, don't, don't. If you want this to be something that can take care of your family and take care of you, it can. But if you don't take it serious, it won't take you serious. And that's, that's what I'm learning right now. If you don't take this serious, it won't take you serious. And if you cut corners, people will know. Eventually it will come out. And again, that will damage your business. Number two, I'm learning that if you do have a product that's unique, that's another thing, that you have a product that's unique, people can't just walk into the store and get what you're doing because you know you can't really compete against the box stores. They have so uh, so many items and products and also, you know, the price points are so low because, you know, they, they buy their stuff in the millions, right? So the price point is gonna be super low for the big stores because that's just what happens. They can buy stuff at a very, very cheap price. So you can't compete against them like that. But what you can do is, is create uh, unique products so that when people come to, the, to wherever you are and to taste what it is that you're offering, they're like, man, you can't get this in the store. And that's what you want people to say. You can't get this in the store. When people, also, when people come to the farmer's market, they come with money, they come with budgets. They already know stuff is gonna be a little bit uh, pricier than going to a regular box store. They already know that. So what are they looking for? I believe they're looking for a, an experience with people, kindness. They wanna talk to people who understand what they're doing. Uh, and they also want something that's unique. And to me, what I've experienced, they want something that they can continue to consume all the time. And that was gonna happen. They also want something that they will continue to consume um, regularly. A lot of times we get asked, are you guys gonna be here next week? Um, because people come in the farmer's market in, markets in cycles. Everybody don't come all the time. People travel, vacation. Um, people sometimes get so used to what's been offered in the farmer's markets that they, um, they, they may take some time off because they're like, okay, nothing's new. And then when they show back up, they see somebody like us, they're doing our thing with our snacks. And they're like, okay, this is new. Okay, you guys gonna continue to be here even eight, and they don't know that we've been there for like four or five weeks in a row. They just haven't been there. They took a break. So you have to continue to be successful in what you do over and over and over again because there are people, new people coming all the time. And then on top of that, there are people who used to come all the time who may have taken a break from the farmer's market and they're coming back. You wanna make sure that you stay consistent and you wanna make sure that you show up. There are times like today, we work to 10, 11, 12 at night, jump into bed, do your thing, get some rest, get back up at five o'clock or 5.45, six o'clock, get back up, load up your vehicle, drive 45 minutes to an hour uh, to your venue. Today is gonna be like, it's supposed to be a 40 minute drive, but an hour and a half almost because traffic is so bad. Um, and so you have to know that it's gonna be time consuming. So I would say, if you're going to put all that time into what you're doing, all this time, you may as well do your best and, and give it your best shot because you got, you putting so much into it. You don't want to put eight hours into something and go somewhere and only make $20. You don't want to do that. You don't want to make, you know, do something and you don't put your heart into it. You don't make anything. You don't want that. Another thing I would say, if you are a person in the food world, taste what you do. Taste your food every time. Do not trust anybody, not including yourself. Don't trust your mind, don't trust your memory because things change. You can have somebody working on something and they just decide they don't wanna put a certain ingredient in it. 
it, seriously, they can just change their mind. Oh, I don't want to do that today. Well, what if you got somebody hooked on it because a certain ingredient was in it and it's, it was a certain way and it had a certain feel and then you change. So you have to be, I'm talking about to the CEOs and if you get somebody to do co-packing or you're doing something that somebody is making something with you, you have to make sure that it stays consistent. Again, people buy because they, you know, we give out samples and like, oh, I love this. And then the next week we come back and say, you got something in it that had paprika. This week, you decided you didn't want to use paprika. Well, what if that was the thing that stimulated that person's brain and their taste buds that caused them to want to have your product? But now this week, you don't have paprika in your stuff. It's not going to go off the same because it's a certain thing people are looking for. And if you don't fulfill that, they're going to be like, oh my God, you know, this isn't the same. What's different about this? People are like that. People are finicky. People pay attention. That's one thing I would say. And at the end of the day, I could go on and say more and more, but another thing is you have to build an experience for people. You know, when people go to a grocery store, a big box store, they're not looking for an experience. Yeah, you're gonna hear some music playing above and all that stuff like that. But for the most part, you're not going to Walmart for an experience. You're going to Walmart because you're going to get something and you're trying to get it at a low price. You're trying to get it at a price that, okay, you can afford and get as many as you can. The farmer's market is, is, is kind of different. Um, in my opinion, the farmer's market is you have to, uh, you know, you have to um, give people an experience. Um, some people call, some people give people tours when it comes to their food, flavor tours. Um, there are different things you have to do to think about what do you need to do to get somebody to come over and give you a shot. Again, if you're a new vendor like us, brand new, nobody knows who we are. We don't have any uh, we don't have any credits in their bank. They don't have any they don't have an experience with us. They don't know what we offer. They don't know um, how what we have taste right so how do you get somebody to come over you have to develop your own style of talking to people some people say hey you want to try some samples sometimes that work some people might say hey some people just sit back in lawn chairs and just let their product speak to people they don't say anything they just let people walk up to them and if people don't walk up to them they won't say anything to them well with us that's not what we do we try to speak to most of the people that come by we try to say something to them because we engage them because sometimes saying hello causes people to just look over um you can't be afraid of rejection there are a lot of people who who are shopping in the the farmers markets who who see your hello ads will you come over here and, and check me out so a lot of times you'll say hello to somebody and people will respond with no thank you because they 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 think in their mind the only reason why you're speaking to me is you're trying to seduce me over to be able to get this product and so some people's straight up answer is no thank you i'm only here for this certain thing i'm not going to even uh pay attention to what you have to offer i don't want it leave me alone that's the truth that really is the truth of, of how a lot of people feel but you can't give up if you have like a quitters mentality a type of mindset that like somebody can upset you because they say they don't want to come over there and talk to you um then you're not gonna be successful in what we're doing. You're not gonna be successful. There, there was a lady last week that literally said, every week I come by and I say no to you. She literally told me that, like, I, every week I come by, I say no. And I'm like, wow, like she's already have it made up in her mind that she's not going to invest in our business, no matter what. She's literally said that every week I say no. Every week I pass you, I say no. And it's almost as if she's saying, you need to memorize my face and realize that you're wasting your breath even talking to me because I'm not going to come over there and um, support your business. I understand, I get it, but guess what? Almost any other person says hello. Sometimes I say hello to somebody three or four times in a day because I'm not focusing on them. I'm just, I'm just getting it in the routine. And it's so crazy that you can be doing your thing and you could be thinking nobody's gonna pay attention. You might go through a dry spot and you say hello to a person and a person could be thinking about 25 things. You gotta realize people got life going on. People got they, uh, air buds going on in here. They got music playing. They on, some people are on the phone and some people are going through stuff in their own personal life. They're not thinking, they're not there. They're somewhere else. And sometimes you saying hello 
just jars them out of the moment for them to say, okay, hey, how you doing? What do you got to offer? They may come over. Sometimes it's the people that you don't think is gonna stop that stops. It's crazy. Some people can be looking at you and, and they know what you have to offer and they're just looking, 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 looking at you and they won't come over. And you'll say, what's going on? They'll be like, I'm just looking. I mean, but they're looking, they're, they're what my mom used to say, they're gawking, which is, I don't even know if that's a real word. But anyway, they're gawking at you. And it's like, even when they're walking by, they body, they, they like, their body is passing by, but their head is like the inspector gadget. And they look at it and you're like, man, okay, I know this person interested. And you'll say something to them like, hey, my help give you, you know, tell you what we got going on. No, that's okay. I don't want anything. I don't like popcorn. I don't like this. I don't like soda. I don't like uh, chitlins. I don't like potato chips. I don't like whatever you like, but, but you almost broke your neck trying to look at what I was doing, you know, like rubbernecking. It's just, that's just human nature. And then you'll see a person that stops, could be 20 feet from you. They look at what you're doing. They just make a beeline to you. You don't even have to sell it to them. Some people are like, I don't, I know, I don't want, I don't want to taste. I don't know, just, I want this. I saw that flavor. I want to try it. Don't worry about it because they know it's not going to cost them $50 to get it. So if they give you 10, 5, 10, 15, $20 for something, it's not the end of the world to them because they wanted to take a chance. Those people, it's just like, it's amazing. It's amazing when that happens because it's so easy. But the thing is, you have to continue to put the, the your your fishing line in the water. You have to continue to put your fishing line in the water. And like one of my new mentors is telling me, you got to realize and you have to learn that everybody isn't your customer. Everybody is not your customer. You start you start seeing how people body language is. You can literally see people in their eyes and all they're looking for sometimes is somebody just to tip them over like, like that little game in Chuck E. Cheese. You know, you're just pushing the coins, pushing the co coins. The person is already craving what you got. They're already craving what you offer. And sometimes just say, hey, come on over here, blah, 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 blah. Okay. It's like, you know, that, that's what it is. It, it, and it happens over and over and over again. Does that mean that they're going to buy? No, it really doesn't, unfortunately. But at the end of the day, is that the goal for everybody to buy? Some people may test you out or see you for a month and they don't do anything. And the next thing you know, whenever they decide that they want to give you a shot, they will. And it's just like, you know, it's like, voila, here I am. I've been here the whole time. And when they taste what you're doing, they're like, man, this is good. Like, yeah, you've been missing this the whole time. I've been trying to tell you and you have fun. The last part of the experience, I think is having fun. Um, for me, is if I can make somebody laugh or I can make somebody have a pleasurable experience with our business, I think I won. Whether I swipe their card or whether they exchange, you know, cash with me or not. I think that if I make them laugh and I gave them a pleasurable experience, um, you know, I think I did my thing. Last Yesterday, um, I took my daughter to uh, Chick-fil-A and I was thinking about this whole thing about how they always say my pleasure. And I was sitting in there, I was like, I wonder if we're gonna get a my pleasure today. You know, and I was just thinking to myself, then say it out loud. And then I saw, you know, people working and I saw two workers and somebody did something for their coworker at Chick-fil-A. And literally somebody, one of the coworkers said to the coworker, you know, my pleasure. Now I'm thinking in my mind that they're not gonna say it to each other. Well, it, it surprised me that the coworker said my pleasure to each other. And I was like, hmm. But then I thought about it. I said, well, when you're building a culture, that's just your culture. It doesn't matter who you're dealing with. And when it gets instilled into your DNA like that, you're not looking at the person as a customer or a coworker. Um, you're looking at the person as this is our culture of our company. And then when they brought us our stuff, I said, thank you. And of course, drum roll, please. What did I hear? My pleasure. That's the thing. You leave out of their business with a positive, no matter what happens. Oh, thank you for this. My pleasure. When you walk out of Chick-fil-A, or normally, or sometimes when you drive through the drive-through, one of the last things you hear from them is my pleasure. And I don't, I don't know how, but that does something to the brain. I don't care what nobody says. When you hear something like that, it does something to you personally. And uh, it, it just, you leave them with a beautiful, uh, nice experience. And I think that's what you want to do with your with your business. And what I'm trying to do with our business, I want to be a, I want to be like Chick-fil-A, for real. 
I want people to leave with a pleasurable experience. And um, even when they're rude, sometimes people can be really rude, but that's cool. But there are also times when you meet people and it may not seem like you're making an impact. And sometimes people will come back and they'll give you a tip. Um, a few days ago, wasn't paying attention. A person you know, bought whatever and then they walked away and they came back and said, here's something extra for your business. Um, a couple of weeks ago in another location, um, I met a man from North Dakota something and he came back later and said, you know, I didn't buy anything, but I wanted to just, uh, he said, I just want to give some towards the cause. That's what he said. I want to give some towards the cause. And he, and he gave, and he gave something. That's what people, that's when people have a pleasurable experience with you. That's what sometimes it ha what happens. They'll, they'll be a blessing to your business financially. Is that why you're doing it? No, because you're doing the business. Now, so the thing is, you know, had this conversation yesterday. Is it about making money or is it about doing business? I think if you build a business the right way, the money will come. I think if we do it the right way, then the money will flow. So I think the key is to build a business by being kind and by showing empathy to people and by giving people what they want and presenting yourself in the right way. And then if you build a business that way with your vision, then it turns around and it creates money for you because people aren't buying your product people are buying you and also zig ziglar says people like to buy but they don't like to be sold and i really do believe that people want to buy but they don't like to be sold and when you can be cool calm and collected and you know what you're doing i don't think people have a problem with giving you money i don't think people have a problem even if they don't really want your product they can still turn around and invest simply because of you a couple of guys have told me man you're a good salesman and i told myself what did i do i didn't even offer them the product I didn't even offer them anything. It was just, I was just talking to them and just being chill. But I think that's a part of persuasion. It's just to chill out and have a conversation and make people comfortable. Let's see what happens. So that's, a, that's, that's it, y'all. I'm back on this highway. It's starting to rumble a little bit. And I hope today's um, episode is just cool for us to just have a conversation about doing business and if you want to start at the farmer's market there's so much more we could talk about and maybe i'll do a video later maybe today i may do a part two um after today recapping what happened and that's something that i i wanted to start doing before is doing a recap you know because it's cool to get up in the morning when you're refreshed and all that but also what happens you know after the market talking about the experiences maybe i'll do that um today and maybe i'll start doing that going forward just doing videos recapping you know the pre-game and then the post game what y'all think about that all right thanks again for tuning in for liking subscribing to the channel we'll see you next time right here on the antonio neal channel peace